This episode is brought to you by ev.com.au, the all electric car sharing platform. The Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus 2021 model made in China. Back in 2019, I did my first impression video with thanks to one of my Patreons, Ashley. So thanks, Ashley. I thought, you know what? It's been a long time and I've never done a review on this car. So today, I'm going to address that very issue. What's it like now? Are there any improvements? The previous one was made in California, US of A, and this one's now made in China, which for some reason some people have issues with. I do not know why. Please explain in the comments. So, driving impressions, interior, fit, finish, battery technology, driving. It's all changed, it's all different, and today I'm gonna to answer the question, is this still the electric car to beat in 2022? The Tesla Model 3 was first released in Australia July 2019. Since then, its exterior looks haven't undergone much of a change. Chrome door handles and window surrounds have been replaced by blacked out versions. The boot is now power lift, and the center console, which you'll soon see, has dual wireless phone charging and improved overall design. The rear view of the Model 3 is very successful, creating a hybrid between Tesla's Model S and X that is pleasing to my eye. The front I've never been a huge fan of, what with its flat duck bill design that once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. However, its side profile is very luxury sedan like and the black accents have helped create a car that is unique and in a language that says Tesla. Priced for nearly $64,000 before on-road costs, or in Victoria, $69,361 drive away, the Standard Range Plus, I mean Model 3, they've dropped the word standard from the vernacular and can be priced up to an eye-watering $104,798 for a red-hot performance model with 20-inch Uber turbine wheels, wide interior and lower suspension. But today, you'll frequently hear me call this car the Standard Range Plus because it's what I've driven for more than several months over the last two years, so please forgive me. But first, a word from today's video sponsor. If you've ever wanted to try an electric car but not sure if it's going to be right for you, have you thought about renting from EV? Instead of maybe a test drive for 20 minutes, you can actually give an electric vehicle a go for like 24 hours, a few days, or even weeks. EV has Australia's largest range of electric vehicles for hire, with over 100 available across the country. No other car rental company in Australia has the range and choice, meaning that you can actually try this Model 3 from Seiji or maybe a BYD, Ionic 5, EV6 and many more. Getting yourself into one is easy. Simply create an account, select your vehicle and meet up with a car owner who is also passionate about EVs. EV does all the hard work for renters and owners with license checks, insurance and payment handling. So check them out as they've got great rates. And if you want to save like $30 on your next rental, use my referral link below. And thanks again to EV, back to the review. The Tesla Model 3 is a sedan and space in the rear is okay. Foot space is not that brilliant. My feet are actually tucked under the seat right now because I like my seat low. Um, this seating position is in mine and I'm five foot 10 and I've got heaps of space here. Uh, headroom, not bad. Um, it's helped by that glass roof, which is lovely and really a great view, especially for like kids where they maybe a bit lower like this and they can look up and enjoy the scenery. The center armrest comes down revealing two cup holders which are actually pretty small and doesn't fit my large drinking bottle but these are two of eight in the car in total and the door bins uh, well in the front definitely fit them. The center one in the front also fit the large drinking bottle but the uh, side door pockets definitely do not. Under thigh support is okay. Um, I feel like I'm sitting up a bit proud and I, I wish I could be just a little bit more reclined. Sitting across the back, you're going to get two adults very comfortably, two car seats, absolutely that's fine. The third position is, yeah, it's going to be tight. If you're going to have three people across here, three teenagers or adults, it's not going to be a comfy ride, you're going to be a bit squashed. Down in the center, you've got rear vents as well as USB-C for charging your phone and devices. Two lights up top here, which you can turn on and off and automatically come on, obviously, with the car. 
The grab handle features the open and close mechanism to get out of the car, as well as control for your windows. Seal height is reasonable and kids can see out of this quite well. My only criticism here is that there is rear seat warmers, but they can't be controlled by the rear seat passengers whatsoever. Some cars have it built into the uh, front side seats here. Others like in the Ionic 5 actually have it as a door control, or like a button on the door rather. But in the Tesla Model 3, it has to be done through the center screen, which is either controlled by the driver or passenger. Front interior, let's talk about the initial impression and that is to say it's dark, it's contrasty and it's not just because this is a black and white interior. If you go for the other one with the wood grain finish, I like that, it's it's nice but I much prefer this white one, I just figure, it, I don't know, it just seems a bit more posh, a bit more sophisticated, a bit more 2022. Okay, driving position, the seat is power adjustable and you can find a great sitting position which is stored in the memory with your profile so when you get in the mirror is adjusted steering wheel is also adjusted it goes in and out up and down and the seat it's lovely now if you're new to Tesla's especially the Model 3 you're thinking to yourself where's my pinnacle my driver's display right in front of me or a heads-up display it's not here it's all handled by this massive screen and the speeds in the top right hand corner but that's it there's nothing in front of me now this is, I think, a cost-saving thing. Um, when you look to how they restyled the Model S and X, they've still got the pinnacle for the driver. So it's, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't like it. I really would like to see right in front of me here, something that I can see a lot easier than glancing over to the left. You do get used to it, you really do. And uh, yeah, you, you know where it is and you get a feel for your speed of the car, obviously. But I still want something in front of me and with Polestar 2 they've got and done it and they've emulated and copied if you ask me what um, you know Tesla has done with the Model S and X and uh, yeah I think maybe in the next version of the Model 3 uh, we'll actually see that. Coming over here to our center screen I'm not going to go too deep on this because you know what this changes over time constant over the air updates which actually improve the car over time and um, what is broken this time will be fixed in the future and that's just the way the tester is and I love that I really do I, I think it's this is what people should be striving for all car makers that is all car makers should be striving for this and do this over their update sort of stuff all right so just going quickly through it you've got your basic controls from uh, automatic headlights and wipers I'll get into pedals and steering later on charging so you can set uh, your normal daily range or let's say you're going to do a big road trip so you might want to take the car to 100% but this is lithium phosphate batteries and I'll talk about that later on. Lights for the car so like headlights and interiors. Display options here so it's currently at 32% and it's very bright. Different chip computers and let's have a look at this. We're getting 130 watt hours per kilometer here, 150, 150 that's, so that's very efficient, 15 kilowatt hours per 100 k's, excellent. Navigation options, so I like my sound off, thank you very much. Some service stuff, and then where we started with the software. It's all very responsive, super fast and zippy. The new graphics I really do like, and there's lots of different views, and you can um, change it to like you know grayscale view, nighttime view, you name it. It's all there, and it's very, very well executed. You've got Spotify. You've got your toy box, which has got things like uh, your theater, Netflix, YouTube, Twitch, arcade, where you've got games. And my girls absolutely love the arcade. Haven't got time to show you today, but rest assured, um, Tessa brings the fun to motoring. Toy box with the infamous fart mode. So when you do a, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Girls love it. They really do. You know, like what what car maker does this? And then finally a web browser, which is not the best experience, believe you me. Um, so I I can't want for much in here, or can I? And this is the part of the video where I'm going to say, like I normally do say, and that is that Tesla in 2022 for a premium car brand you've got to somehow integrate Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. 
it's not good enough that you're actually using your phone's Bluetooth connection to say listen to an audiobook. Or let's say you don't want to use the maps that are built into the car and you want to use a better route planner. Or one of many, many hundreds of other apps that are supported by Apple and by Google and provide that premium experience. And for those who are right now in the comments saying, Chris, my experience of that has always been bad, I've got to say maybe that's your phone, I'm sorry to say, or maybe it's your head unit could be either or other, but when you've got a reasonable phone and you've got a good head unit, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are being put in by almost all other car makers for a reason, because they are the best in the business. And this, all this stuff with the you know, arcade toy box and things are fun. Yes, Tesla could take the load off themselves and not have to build this built-in Spotify integration. Enough ranting on about that, but let's finish off the interior and say that the sound system in here is brilliant. The fit and finish is lovely. Everything fits very nicely. There's no creaky noises. Um, the wireless phone charging for your phone is great. I like where it is. It's kind of out the way. Um, the built-in cubbies to hide some things away and keep things organized is brilliant. Cup holders, they're a decent size. I wish they were a little bit bigger. Driver controls, electric window controls, visor. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's a car, it's a car after all. And um, I think that it's great and something that, again, I wish I had. That well thought out design for driver is apparent as soon as you drive the car. You get in, you push the stick down and it's ready to go. It knows you're sitting down. You've got the credentials, that is to say the key to go and that's it. You don't need to do anything else. This is a feature that all car makers should be heading towards and it's one that I actually saw in the Polestar too. And the more that you get used to it, the more likely you're to say, why Why did we even have that stop start button when you know, proximity keys became a thing? Steering weight can be adjusted to three different levels. That is to say, comfort, standard and sport. And uh, I prefer it in comfort because that weight of the car, you can really feel it no matter what mode you choose. And I kind of figure, hey, why make that effort of driving even harder? And don't get me wrong, the, the power steering is great and it works really well. And the turning circle is respectable. But because it's such a small, chunky wheel, um, I just figure that, yeah, the sport setting on it, that gives it that sort of bit of weight, a bit of gravitas. Uh, it just makes it a little bit harder to move around and you, you might feel you're getting a bit of a workout. With Tesla being the car maker to beat when it comes to electric vehicles, they've got all these smarts sorted out, which I spoke about before. And acceleration is either in one or two different flavors, and that is to say standard or chill. And uh, this isn't the performance variety, so I'm not sure if you actually have a performance one, there's probably actually maybe a crazy mode in there that gets you to zero to 100 in this much time. But um, it's, it's for a standard range plus, the acceleration on this is impressive. Surprisingly, noise levels inside this car could be a hell of a lot better. I drive electric vehicles and review them on this channel, so subscribe if you want to see more of them. And my MG ZS EV is quieter at speed than this. I actually thought there was something wrong back there with one of the windows, like there was a little crack in it or something because the wind noise was coming off, drafting off over there. I, I don't understand it. Maybe it's just a little bit of a, um, uh, maybe a material flaw. The Ionic 5 was definitely way quieter than this. Um, and after all this time where Tesla has been slowly and progressively iterating and improving and adding laminate glass and things like that, it, it still isn't good enough for this price of vehicle, the market leader, they could definitely do a lot better with noise control. Suspension and ride, I think is quite good. It's well controlled, doesn't roll around very much at all, uh, absorbs our very trashy roads in Australia quite well. And I find driving this to be a pleasure. Um, in terms of uh, cars and ranking it against other ones, 
Uh, honestly, it's uh, right up there. I think a wee bit better actually than the Ionic 5, definitely. Uh, the Polestar 2, mind you, I felt was a more refined, a better polish experience. Again, the benchmark that I set here that I really want Tesla to hit and really want them to improve upon is that just get in, honestly, a Golf. I kid you not, okay. And I know for the people out there who are like, Chris, it's a nice car. Well, it doesn't matter. It, whenever you've been in a Golf, the suspension that is so well-tuned and um, it, it it's helps by the fact that the wheels are on the corners. And I'm not gonna do a car review on that right now, but <laughs> the point is, is that um, they, they just, I think they need to do something. And I don't know what it is. I'm not an engineer, I'm not a technician. People who come from European brands like Audi, BMW and VW, they all know uh, how much better those cars are with the ride and handling. And that also translates over to the interior. And uh, if Tesla's to outcompete them and be the true market leader across all brands, and just what I really want them to be at, they need to look to what those other car companies are doing and learn from them. I sound like I'm piling on Tesla, and don't get me wrong, I love this car, I really do. Um, and let's talk about some positives, shall we? Electrics, the efficiency of this is amazing. We're running at 142 watt hours per kilometer. That's like 14.2 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. That's the way it should be, Tesla. <laughs> and if you want range, if you want that comfort of the supercharging network and knowing that you're getting great batteries, you're getting uh, longevity and uh, a, a car that you will be able to safely keep for five, seven, eight, ten years, who knows how long. These things have been on the road, some of them, for like hundreds of thousands of, of kilometers and in that time they've only lost not even 10% of their range. Now that was with the lithium ion batteries and these are the lithium phosphate batteries which actually are able to do more cycles that is to say from 100% down to 0%, that's one cycle, thousands of times over. So if you do a journey and you do let's say 33.3% and you do that journey three times, that is one cycle. And then you plug it in and charge it up. But that's actually not how you treat an electric car. An electric car you actually get at home and you plug it in and you top up whatever range you lost that day and with this you can go to 100% and you don't have to worry about it. It actually loves being charged 100%. They really want you to do that. It, it's a, a peridium shift that a lot of people um, at first were like on the forums. People are like, are you sure? I'm, I've read everywhere. I've seen YouTube videos by this guy saying you should only charge to 80 or 90% for your daily commute. <laughs> this car, they want you to go to 100%. Um, and uh, I think moving forward, uh, until we get solid state batteries, this is, this is the battery to buy. People are hanging out for the, the new cells that are coming out of Tesla. Um, and yeah, they might be awesome and uh, they have uh, more power, more range. Uh, but are they gonna also have those um, issues that uh, lithium iron have? I'm, I'm not very sure, but uh, one thing is for certain is that if I was to buy a electric car today and I had a choice between lithium iron or lithium phosphate, I would choose lithium phosphate, which is what you've got in this car. As a driver in a Tesla, that minimal interior, which I sometimes complain about, isn't, isn't an issue whatsoever because on the steering wheel, you've got the two different uh, knobs that you can control. It, the multifunctional, it doesn't take too long for you to actually understand what they're gonna do given the context. So like this left side is for your volume up and down, track forward and backwards. The right side's for your cruise control or autopilot speed so you can um, quickly go up and down or you uh, press it left and right to actually increase or decrease your follow distance from the car in front. Whenever I get into an electric vehicle and I'm trying to think about what I like and don't like, the one thing that I compare all others to is Tesla's autopilot. This is done under vision, cameras. There's no radar here. It's got ultrasonic sensors for like parking and maneuvering your car, great. But no, for actual things in front of it, the environment around it, this screen where it's showing you what it's actually seeing, it's all done under vision. And it's 
hell of a, it, it, it's mighty impressive. People who uh, don't know um, what good lane keep assist is, you know, where it keeps it in the center of the lane and it keeps a safe follow distance, they need to jump into a tester to understand why. I always say to people, you know what? I, I prefer the Ionic 5. I think it's a great car, it's an awesome car. But I would much rather test this autopilot in it. And the reason is, is because this is the market leader when it comes to uh, autonomous driving. You can see where they're going to be and over in America where they're doing the full self-driving beta testing, these cars are driving themselves on urban streets. Pressing that drive stick down one time enables cruise control, it's adaptive cruise control, and you press it down twice for autopilot. And you can use autopilot on urban streets despite what people might say otherwise. You, you, I mean, I'm in suburbia, I'm in my local area, here we go. It's, it's doing it, I just rest my hand on the steering wheel so I don't get the nag saying, hey, are you there? Uh, which, mind you, I really do wish they would do something about. They recently turned on the internal camera in Teslas and I really would rather that they actually use that to monitor the driver looking out and forwards compared to using their hand and a little bit of torque on the steering wheel to say to the car that you're absolutely there. There are some brands that actually have sensors in them that are like a capacitive touch system so they know you've got your hand on it but if you ask me you can defeat that quite easily. I'm, I'm certain of it. All right about to jump into a freeway so I'm going to pull him safely over here where I know I can and we'll do a 100k per hour test and I will use the timer magic of Final Cut Pro to give you that time. Wait for everything around me to clear and give me some space because I'll catch that car in a second. All right, three, two, one. That's 50, 90, 100. Oh, there we go. I was a bit late with the 100 call, but you get the idea. And <laughs> did, you, did you hear the whir of the engines? Like, whoo, love that sound. It, Oh, okay. That's that's what I don't care for the acoustics to actually, um, you know, uh, come through. <laughs> Tesla's always iterating and improving its software, and it's not unusual for owners to get updates every two, three, four days. Sometimes it's insane, and uh, everyone gets excited because who knows what you're going to be getting. And um, sometimes it's just bug fixes. Uh, other times it's significant uh, upgrades to the car. And the one that you buy today is not the same one you're gonna be maybe getting rid of in three or five years time. No, it actually improves and uh, they're all for free. There's no subscription service with that. It's, it's brilliant. Uh, one of the things that I think they recently added that I think they need to improve upon is its blind spot detection system. And appearing down the bottom right corner of the screen, you can see out the um, repeater uh, where the actual you know the flasher is um, and you can see that view and yeah it's, it's, it's given a nice uh, view of the blind spot but with my hands in my typical driving position that is to resting around the 910 position it's blocking a good third of it um, and I don't know where it could go um, I think perhaps maybe they could shift it up towards more the center of the screen and the map temporarily gets ridden over. I'm, I'm not too sure, but for Australia, I think even America, I think the criticism is fair and that it's uh, lovely how it's turned the blinker off. It's, it's, it's great to have and a good safety feature. Um, but like in the Ionic 5, you do left to right, it's in your pinnacle in front of you and it appears on the left or right hand side of where either the uh, speedometer is or else where your um, battery uh, sort of, you know, performance stuff is. Um, and that just makes more sense. But I guess perhaps the one that is the best at this is actually Audi e-tron. And they have it in like the A pillars in the spot just next to the mirrors. So when you indicate it, you can actually see truly what's in your blind spot. Uh, this is the only screen you've got in your Tesla and they can improve and change this over time that they do. And uh, yeah, I just think then there's a better, a better place for it. Visibility in the Tesla Model 3 is pretty good. The A pillar is quite thick and large, but what car isn't these days? Um, the B pillar for me is great. It's behind my field of view, so I can see very clearly out to the side and my blind spot and all that sort of stuff. Um, the only issue is, is that rear window. 
It's a massive span of glass, but because it's a sedan and it's very slopy and very sharp, it, it surprisingly with this small rear view mirror, um, it's kind of really small and hard to see out of. And because of, I think that rear view mirror being so small, you don't really appreciate um, your surroundings. You, you, I think over time you'll definitely get used to it because I'm seeing the two heads of the uh, rear seat passengers, but maybe the mirror, the rear view mirror just needs to be larger and it would address the issue. Another one of those over the year updates that Tesla added over time was that uh, when 2019, uh, September I think it was, when the first Model 3s were delivered to Australia, they didn't have one pedal driving. Uh, only at that stage, I think, pretty certain of it, um, Nissan Leafs had it. So one pedal driving, if you don't know, is an awesome feature that all electric cars should have. And that is that right now I'm coming out to a stop so I'm just taking my foot off the accelerator just slightly to let the car slow down and I'm modulating the accelerator. I'm not going to touch the brake at all. And when I come to a stop where I wanted to, foot's off the accelerator and that's it. And then the brakes are applied. People behind me will actually see brake lights go on and it's got some smarts around that. So I think it's like more than or around about negative three Gs and they go on. So people actually go, oh yeah, the car in front of me is going to be slowing down soon. So I better, I better slow down too. And uh, it's very, very intuitive. You learn it very quickly and you seldom actually have to use the brake. The brakes on the Model 3 um, are, are good. They're effective, don't get me wrong. But the feel of the brake pedal itself is terrible. There's very little play in it. It feels like you're chunking on a bit of wood. And uh, I would just... Tesla, if you're watching this, can you maybe just give it a little bit more um, feel to it? You, you don't get a sense of feedback. Um, there's very little play, you're either stopping or you're starting. It's very digital and yeah, it could be better. Right now, you're probably hearing the sounds of the, um, the HVAC system, uh, well, actually the battery management system warming up and it's getting the uh, battery warm to accept the charge for supercharging. And by entering that I was going to the Moody Ponds um, uh, supercharger here, in the last five minutes, it started ramping it up. It's actually preconditioned the battery to get it to that Goldilocks um, state where it's nice and warm and able to accept a rapid charge, get a lot of electricity um, from the supercharger. Tell you what, reversing and parking the Tesla is awesome. That camera is great quality. You can see it very clearly. The side repeater view is great as well, so you can actually see out the sides of the car. I just wish it actually had a front camera on those front facing down sort with the like bird's eye, uh, what I call God view, uh, because yeah, it's really actually um, really nice to be able to see in front of the car sometimes. The sensors are great, don't get me wrong, and they give you a really good approximation of centimeters, how far away you are from something, but not everything is that clear cut. And where most other car brands now are giving that um, drop down view where you can even circle around like this with the Ionic 5, um, I just feel that with like all these cameras on Teslas, why not actually have just one more at the front to enable that view? One of the benefits of Teslas is the supercharger network and in Australia right now it's not open to any user. It is in some parts of Europe and, and I believe worldwide it's going to happen. So at the moment this is a true market advantage. And if you buy a Tesla, you've not only got these, which provides a really rapid charge and gets you up and going pretty damn fast, but in some shopping centers, uh, wineries, tourist destinations, and more, you have destination charges. And that means that you can sometimes get like free juice there as well. And add to that, the public charging network is available in Australia, as well as private companies. If you want to go on a road trip on the eastern border of Australia, you're completely fine. All of Tasmania, you're completely fine. South Australia, Western Australia, um, Northern Territory, the Red Centre, still a bit of an issue, but this is a massive country. <laughs> it's a huge, huge continent. And um, yeah, you, you, you're not well served there yet, but no one is, no one is. So if you want an absolute, you don't need to worry about ch charging pretty much, um, you buy a Tesla. 
absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, people say to me, oh, I'm just really anxious about range and I do lots of road trips. I'll be like, okay, if that's the case, you need to go for a Tesla because you've got access to this and they're, they're, they're almost becoming ubiquitous, almost. So, is the Tesla Model 3 still the car to beat in 2022? Despite its recent price rise, which actually makes it a lot harder to justify buying this, if you want the best car when it comes to battery management, acceleration and performance, supercharger network and charging ability, autopilot lane keep assist, over there updates that are free and just come almost seemingly all the damn time, and a car that Sure, it's polarizing both on the interior where it's a bit spartan and not so much to maybe everyone's taste and the exterior which I think is really beautifully executed on the profile on the rear but not so much in the front. There's very few things to dislike here. I still wish I had this car. This is the one that I want. The one with the white interior, the white finish and yeah. Um, if, if you're thinking about, hey, is this the right car? I think I've heard a lot about this and people are saying this is a car to buy. Well, take it from me. I've reviewed a lot of electric cars. I've driven a lot of electric cars. And this car, I've actually driven, not just for this 24 hour rental, but I've actually driven it over, well, the last two, three years for probably all in told two to three months. And getting back into it and feeling that Tesla experience, it, it is the best electric car on market and I can't not recommend it enough. But thanks to EV for making this video possible. And if you've enjoyed it, please do absolutely subscribe. It's free, it really is, and it does support the channel because it opens the doors for me to do stories like this, which I, I find interesting. I hope you find them fun and interesting too. Um, but if you wanna see more of this sort of content and behind the scenes, regular news, polls, and stuff that I just don't show you here on YouTube, please join me on Patreon where you get all this and a lot more from as little as $2.50 per month. And as per usual, you be good and you be great.